Hi, you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit from Monday. Over here in the Atlantic, we are closely watching newly formed tropical storm Rena over here in the Western Caribbean. If we take a look at the floater loop here, the center is tucked in right in the southeast part of the convection somewhere in here. Kind of hard to spot it exactly, but it is somewhere in here. It's not quite symmetric yet, but the convection has been firing steadily all night and trying to expand over the center. The center was exposed down to the southeast last night. It is now under the convection, and it will slowly probably get more symmetric as the day goes on and as time progresses overall. And this is a great situation for convergence in this area. Here we have lots of wind coming nor from the north out of the Gulf of Mexico, converging with southeasterly winds out of the Caribbean, helping vorticity to spin up in here, and the storm has been able to feed back. Despite all the dry air that we have sitting off to the northwest here, which is visible on the water vapor imagery, we have a lot of dry air off to the northwest, which is trying to get entrained. And it's also a little bit dry off to the southeast, but it's not quite as bad. And this will be the main problem for Rena over the next few days, is whether she entrains a lot of this dry air into her circulation. But first, I want to talk a little bit about the track. One can see that there's a little bit of broad troughing over the northern Gulf of Mexico right now, but most of this is starting to leave off to the northeast here. And this is not allowing much of an escape route for the moment for Rena, which is why she's starting to slow down in here. And it's kind of hard to tell where she's moving. Right now, the initial movement is fairly uncertain. We have convection expansion in directions to the south right now, which is implying it makes it look like there's more of a southerly component to her movement than there is right now. It's probably a slow west-northwest to northwest drift, which is what the NHC has for the 11 a.m. movement. But she has been starting to curve off a little bit more towards the left here, and she's probably going to continue on a more west-northwest to westerly track over the coming days, bringing her closer to the Yucatan here north of Honduras. Some of the models still try to wheel her around southwest into Central America. I don't I don't think that's particularly likely here, especially if we look at the sea level pressure anomalies out to 24 hours on the GFS. Notice all these oranges indicating above normal pressures over Central America here. This is representing the western edge of the MJO pulse. Notice that we have all the low pressures out here to the east of Rena, and then Rena is basically right at the wall between low pressures and high pressures here as the MJO is starting to propagate off to the east. And this does give her certain advantages, because if you draw an oval here, around the low pressure. She's in the western lobe of this low pressure area, and this really enhances vorticity and convergence when a system is in this position. So this is giving her certain advantages that are helping her to spin up, but all this high pressure here is going to make it hard for her to just dive west-southwest into Central America. So she should, she should approach the Yucatan, but slowly and probably won't dive straight into the continent. Now, by the time we get out to 48 hours here, you can see the banana ridge starts to build over the northern Gulf of Mexico, and we have ridging down over here over Hispaniola and ridging over Mexico. So it's almost like this rex, rexish block blockish pattern around the system where she doesn't really have that many places to go here and there's ridging all around her on three sides and it's going to be hard for her to move around in this area and it's going to take three, four, or five days to get her to move around anywhere significant in this area, it's going to be a very slow drift and it's going to be a tough forecast on exactly what the track ends up being. But once we go out to 96 hours, we have a broad trough try to dive back into the eastern United States and this ridging in here starts building over the Caribbean which helps propel Rena northward and this is where some of the models take her right up the coast of the Yucatan near Cancun and this does make sense here. What doesn't necessarily make a lot of sense is that the GFS doesn't absorb this into the jet stream as one would expect but instead meanders it around the Caribbean and tries to loop it back and keep it stuck in here for several days afterwards and there are a couple of models that try to do this and yes a sharp curve off to the northeast is likely in such a scenario here but I am unsure that this is actually going to get stuck in the Caribbean this reminds me a little bit of Paula last year which was forecasted to do this and come up and then stay in the Caribbean like this and she ended up moving along Cuba and then dying out right in here that may be more along the lines of what we're looking at with this system, but it is several days out and it's going to be hard to tell exactly what the upper level pattern is going to look like for this in 120 hours when it's sitting near the northeastern Yucatan, so we're going to have to wait on that and actually see what this jet stream looks like. But a northeast path here is what is looking likely, whether it be in the Caribbean near Cuba or into the Florida Keys here, which means these areas in here need to keep a close eye on Rena over the coming days, as well as the Yucatan, which is the number one threat at the moment. Now, this is the 
ocean heat potential for the Caribbean, or not potential, but the actual energy in the ocean. And she, Rena has now moved out of an area of fairly low content near the Nicaragua-Honduras border and is now moving up into this area of very, very warm waters in here, very deep, lots of energy available, and there's a warm eddy right in here along her track and this is going to fuel her and this could be what keeps her going the Caribbean is notorious for spinning up strong storms late in the season and it was around this week of October that we had Wilma in this part of the Caribbean which means that strong storms are supported and that is not to imply that she will be another Wilma because she will not but it does support the idea that strengthening can occur here the biggest problem is going to be the dry air that is overloading to the northwest here and coming in from the north will that be entrained and choke off the convection here and cause the storm to weaken. Today will be a big test to see whether she is going to survive. And you can see at the end of the loop here, some of the convection is starting to weaken. So we'll have to see if she makes it through the diurnal diurnal minimum and makes it to tonight, at which point she could try to fire up again. So we'll have to see what the plane finds later. There is some dry air off to the southeast as well, but it's generally fairly moist in the Caribbean when you look at the total precipitable water. And if we go out to the 700 millibar relative humidity and winds forecast from the GFS out to 72 hours, the good news for Rena is that as the ridging builds out here to the northeast of the Bahamas, the front that's going to come down and try to pick her up is still up in Texas and Oklahoma here. So the next shot of dry air is not coming in yet and the old shot is starting to moderate over the Gulf of Mexico plus we have around this ridge a big moist surge let me get rid of this annoying color here we have a big moist surge coming out of the southeast through the Caribbean which is pushing this dry air away and is really helping to fuel Rena right off to the east of the Yucatan here with moist air and that could help her stay in a fairly moist environment overall as she approaches the Yucatan and if she has this moist push backing her in here, it would not surprise me to see her strengthen. And we could very well see a hurricane out of this. It's going to be difficult with all the dry air that's currently there. But if she survives for the next couple of days and moves only slowly towards the coast, she's going to have some support in here. The upper level environment is pretty decent in this area with anticyclonic flow aloft. She could easily become a hurricane in here, and she could become a strong cat one or even a weak cat two before she interacts with the eastern coast of the Yucatan. And that's what the NHC forecast has right now a category one as she comes up towards the Yucatan and I generally like this track and this intensity right now I don't really have don't really have any disagreements with this except for the caveat that she is a small storm that could feed back in here and could become even stronger than a category one as she nears the eastern Yucatan so the folks in here should keep an eye on this storm very closely because these small things can really wind up in a hurry behind your back if they are allowed to. So if the dryer doesn't become a problem, Rena could become a big problem. So we're going to have to watch this carefully. And again, this could turn off sharply to the northeast here, likely something for Cuba to watch, and then the Florida Keys and northeastern Bahamas down the road. Conditions deteriorate deteriorate a lot when you get north of this line in here, about 22 north, 23 north. Things really deteriorate because with the front diving down over the south, we're going to have a strong jet stream remaining over the southern Gulf of Mexico that will start shearing her. And this is typical of October storms, late season storms that come up in here. Remember again, Paula came up and then basically died right in here near northern Cuba as she came east northeastward. So this will be something that will be weakening if it comes out of the Caribbean, but should still be watched in the Florida, Cuba, and Bahamas area because hurricanes do hit here in October. Remains to be seen how strong Rena is going to be in this area of the world here, but it's not out of the question for a fairly potent system to be coming up towards the western Cuba area in four to five days. Of course, the Yucatan will be our first concern here as this is where she will be making her closest approach during the next few days. So we will closely watch Rena this week. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.